I'm just going to show you this picture really fast and then we're going to go back to our drawings where we create the images. But just like the process of glycolysis had many steps, it was a cellular mechanism with many chemical reactions in it. And just like the citric acid cycle was this weird cycle where enzymes were facilitating these changes between these molecules and stuff was coming in and stuff was being burped out, that's what the Calvin cycle is. It's just a series of chemical reactions with a couple of different inputs and glucose as our output. Don't forget that it's a complex series of chemical reactions. But what I'm about to tell you, the way I'm going to draw it, is what we're going to focus on in this class. So ATP and high energy electron carriers are required as fuel. And I think, yes, all told, to make one molecule of glucose, it's going to take us 18 ATP molecules. And it's going to take us... 12 high energy electron carriers. The, the Calvin cycle, I'm going to draw it like, I don't know. I mean, it's a cycle. So it goes on forever and ever and around and around and around. And actually, all the pictures draw it um, not the way I just drew it. They draw it that way. Whatever. However, whatever. <laughs> It's a circle that goes in a circle that has these inputs. The whole circle of chemical reactions has to happen six times. So it, in order to get one glucose molecule, and each turn of the cycle adds in one carbon dioxide molecule. Okay, so I don't know if that, that sounded confusing inside my own head. 18 ATPs and 12 electron carriers or electron cars, that's in, in six turns of the cycle. It's going to go around six times. And in all six turns, we're going to use a total of 18 ATPs and 12 electron carriers. And that six turns results in one glucose molecule. Each turn, we add one more carbon dioxide. So each turn adds one more CO2, which is why we need to have six turns because glucose has six carbons. So six times we have to take a carbon dioxide molecule of gas and turn it into solid matter, a carbon, a solid carbon structure. When we roll that thing through six times and we add six more carbons to this process, we're going to get glucose out on the other end. You can imagine there are multiple enzymes involved in this, and I am going to give you the name of one of them. This enzyme is, I've heard it said that this enzyme is the most um, plentiful enzyme on the planet. I've also heard it said that this enzyme is the most important enzyme on the planet. When you think about being able to take carbon dioxide gas and turn it into sugar, glorious sugar, that gives rise to all of our feasts, everything comes from that sugar, whether it was plant sugar that a cow ate or that plant sugar that made beans. However, like whatever, it all came from the sun and carbon dioxide gas. Mind-blowing. The enzyme's name is Rubisco. 
And there's no planet on which I'm going to remember the actual name of this enzyme, but I'm going to say it out loud to you because I think this name is really cool. Rubisco is short for ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. That's, what do you say? Should we just call it Rubisco? I'm in. Rubisco is the enzyme that takes the carbon dioxide and connects it to this series of carbon reactions in the Calvin cycle. Hmm. The carbon dioxide, okay. Could you hear me thinking right there? I want to bring back something that I mentioned. I actually can't remember when I mentioned it, but I know I used this picture somewhat. It might have been in the water lecture. Do you remember talking about stomata? Stomata are leaf pores. Like they're these really cool structures on leaves of plants. They look like little mouths and they can open and that lets carbon dioxide in so we can make sugar or they can close. And that may, means we're done making sugar and we're not gonna let any more stuff in. In addition, this allows us to get rid of oxygen, remember that was produced from splitting water to replace electrons in photosystem two. Oh my gosh, I, I just have to know like, do you feel overwhelmed right now? Or do you feel like, oh, the picture, like the pieces are all coming together. I hope you feel like the pieces are coming together. In the next section, I did it again. I made us an animation to walk through the whole thing, to review the whole thing from start to finish and watch the pieces, especially in the photosystems, because I think that's the place where it's, I think it's the hardest to visualize. I have a, an easier time with this kind of visual where I go like, okay, this is a cellular mechanism. This is just a series of chemical reactions. I can, I can accept that there's chemical reactions happening. I'm, I'm cool with that. I can say what goes in, what comes out. Like, yeah, 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 that's cool with me. But that the energy and the electron transport chains, that's a little trickier for my brain to visualize. So let's do an animation review of the whole picture. And then we're going to end it up with um, how awesome oxygen is.